Don't feel like watching movies, so I'll watch people guess them instead. I don't know how it goes, I think it starts with your show. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the newest episode of The Valley Cast, brought to you by The Valley. Hold on. Brought to you by The Valley Folk. I'm your host for today's very special episode, in which I've taken control of this podcast, uh, Elliot Morgan. I'm here with my beautiful, adorable, hilarious, hot, beautiful, very awake. And and very aware of her surroundings. Grace Helbig. Yeah. Yay. Woo! Woo, 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 woo. Grace, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. It's fall here, so now I get to dress like um like a, a, a guy that works as a PA on a set. You look great. Uh, yeah, I look I'm a... Look, I can do this too. Watch. We can, oh, no. if, if you're watching it's, the video version. It's uh, a basic bitch red flannel season. Hey guys, we're all wanting to pretend we live in Oregon. I know. This is welcome to my shop that sells tobacco and crystals. Yep. Uh, okay, guys. So here's what this episode is going to be. We're going to talk a little bit. I went on my Instagram, Instagram.com slash uh, Elliot Morgan, and yeah. asked you guys some questions. Um, but before we begin, y'all, this is the Eve Eve of the Kickstarter launch for Movie Movie Game. Grace, are you as excited and nervous as I am? I am excited and nervous. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I'm as excited and nervous as you are, but I'm excited and nervous. Yeah, I have a really good ability to compartmentalize and push it down and, and just sort of bury my head in the sand and go, okay, it'll, it'll, it's like the election all over again. Yeah. We'll see what happens. It's just now it, we're kind of campaigning. Yeah, you you are. And, you know, you got a great candidate. Thank you. Yeah. And the only We're thing. We're very proud of her. Yeah. The only thing that she's campaigning against is um, herself. Yep. Exactly. And, yeah. this, and, and her, her name is Movie Movie K. Oh. Everybody. We so have some nice. Press. You got to say it twice. <laughs> so nice. You got to say it twice. And also, I was thinking about it and like. It's mm-hmm. so we got these like prototype decks like this, which are cool, but cool. there's like 36 little little test cards in there. But what's fun about it is like the actual one is gonna have like nine Packs? times that, like it'll be like this thick. It's gonna be so many big old box. Um, and you can see the prototype box that we have. We actually have a link for the pre launch page in the description of this video mm. if you guys wanna click on it and. Um, <clears throat> You can be notified when we go live on Friday. We're going to be doing a big live stream. We haven't seen and been or been in the same room together filming anything uh, since J- February, maybe. So wow. and I, we haven't seen each other all together in person since beginning of April or March or something like that. So that's insane. It's it's pretty insane. Yeah. So it'll be wild because part of it's going to be like, don't forget to do the movie movie game, and then another part's going to be like, oh, you look different now. Hey, so you gotta look at your legs. Exactly. Wow. Um, how are you doing, Grace? How's your life going? I mean, it's going pretty well. I'm really excited for you guys. I've just been Thank hearing you. about this game um, for a, such a long time. And now yes. it's like another step closer to being real, which is very, very exciting. It feels like that. And I'm shuffling them right here. Just to- <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Um, she's also That's very excited. She can't believe that it's finally happening. She can't believe there's other Kickstarters that are going to be live when yeah. ours is going live. <laughs> she's, very- she's getting used to all the sounds that happen in this house. Exactly. Um, all right. So here's what we're, how we're going to do this. We're going to play the game. We're going to play a little bit of it. Okay. Yeah. And then we're going to talk about some prompts that people left on the Instagrams. Great. Well, the first thing about this game is that it's going to be fun for you and your family and your loved ones and your hated ones. It's Mm -hmm. just endless hours of fun. I um, am terrible at this game, but that doesn't mean that I don't want to play it. And that's another added bonus is that you can be at any level of movie education and still participate and have a great time. We're going to put that quote on the box. I don't know. I mean, I can come up with better ones, but that, I like that okay. one. Okay. <laughs> All right. Do you want to pick a random question? So there's no real rules. That's the other fun part of this. You make it up as you go along. So let's see what happens. This is a laid back version. But how would you describe uh, the general rules of playing this game? We have a general way, general way of playing where you can like 
there's like a director and then these are called the plot lines. You give the plot lines and each person who guesses it correctly gets five points. Okay. If they need a hint, they lose one point and okay. the first person to say 20 points wins. Okay. And so you can play this with two people. You can play this with mm-hmm. four people, with you can six people. play by people. yourself. Yeah. You can play by yourself. Wow. And... Go ahead. And you, after you, milady. No, I was just going to say there's so many opportunities and so many different social settings to play this game, especially in the time in which we have to still quarantine. You can play this remotely with friends. You can play this on Zoom dates to get to know each other. Ooh. Uh, you can play it with people that Zates. you're already dating if you want to create rifts that you didn't know could possibly exist in your relationship. And let's begin with, on that note. <laughs> Here we go. All right. So I'm going to read you a prompt. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try to find one that you kind of like maybe could do. Oh boy, that is um, that's the hardest part of this game. All right, I got one. We're gonna read the prompt. Okay. And then we're gonna talk about some stuff from the Instagrams, and then I'm gonna give you the answer, so you have time to think about it, so you're not stressed. Oh, out. okay. That so yeah, that works. Because that way you're not. We're not just sitting. So in give silence. me something to think about, and then divert my attention to something else, and then come back to and my stress like, answer. Yeah. Okay. All right. Violence ensues after Josh Brolin Uh stumbles upon a drug deal gone wrong. Two million dollars in cash and a secret organization that polices and monitors extraterrestrials on Earth. I I mean, look, those are all words that I've heard before. (laughs) <laughs> in the English language. Um, and that is an actor that I've heard the name of before. Josh Brolin. Yeah. Okay. Is he in a Fast and a Furious movie? All right. Let's just dive into what okay. the other is. <laughs> Do I get a lifeline? Can I phone my friend Google? Sure. Here's a hint. You want hint one? Of course. This will help. Bowl cut haircuts and cattle stunners. Oh, man. I, you know, I knew I was really bad at this game. And then it's only when we start to play that I remember I'm really bad at this so game. So, you know, you can start with the second one. Do you know what the second one is? Mm. A, a secret organization that polices and monitors extraterrestrials on Earth. Men in Black. That's so good, Grace. Okay. Um, so now you know the first part. Starts, that's the first part. Yeah. Men in Black. And then violence ensues after Josh Brolin stumbles upon a drug deal gone wrong. Two million dollars in cash. Men in Black Mirror. Well, Men in Black is the second one. Oh, okay. Men in Black is the second one. So something, something, Men in Black. Something, something, Men. And so it's Josh Brolin. um, You're down to two points now if you get it correctly. um, Three points. um, Cinderella Man in Black. Wow. Is that a movie, Cinderella Man? (laughs) No, I think it's a movie. Yeah, it is, right? I think so. (laughs) I That's mean, not right. <laughs> it's fun to have the power. Like I know, like I would know this one, but honestly, I don't think I, it's no country for old black for old black men. Is what I oh, no country for old men in black. Uh, no, not c- no country for old black men. <laughs> <laughs> See, this game creates moments that you huh. m- maybe don't need to put on the internet so much. Let's, but, orga- let's talk about that. Let's explore that. Yeah, um, that's uh, some kind of slips. Yeah, well, it's, we're coming off in a, a tumultuous election. Yes. How are you feeling post election, Grace? Exhausted. And um, hopeful, like I, I had a real moment this morning where I was putting eyeliner on, which I haven't done for months, weeks, who knows? And I just felt like I wanted to get dressed up for America today. Like I wanted to look nice because it felt like I could finally care about myself and other people. And like, re- it's just, it feels like a big weight has been lifted off of our yeah. shoulders, even though it's not technically off of us yet. Uh, but I'm feeling I'm feeling really good. How about you? I'm feeling good, but I also feel like there's pressure now because it's like uh, we had a really we don't really have an excuse now. I feel like for the past several years, I could be like, Ugh, I mean, I just we can't. Get, I mean, this guy, this yeah. guy, this guy in office is just so crazy. And that's now what that you've been out, saying. You just keep muttering I just this, guy. this guy anytime I mess Every up. Every day, all day long. Yeah. Yep. Um, well, yeah, I'm very excited, though. I feel like it's going to be a nice thing. I think it's all very entertaining, too, and very not surprising the way everything's going. Now, we're recording this on Tuesday, by the way. So this is a yeah. week after Election Day, mm-hmm. um, a few days after uh, he was sort of announced the, the winner. So it's um, and now it's taken still three days afterward for you after to go. Biden was announced. Yes. The winner. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. And I still am like we slept in. We went to bed at like 10 o'clock last night. And have been uh, getting full nights of sleep. Yeah. Yeah. So like feels- really full nights. 
intense. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah. This is the morning and we're like not even angry. Wow. I know. I'm not waking up without purpose. Let your conscience be your guide as this real boy escapes from a chain gang and navigates the deep south on an odyssey to retrieve buried treasure and avoid becoming a man of constant sorrow. Man of constant sorrow. Peter Pan? Is that one of them? I can understand why you would say that, but what? But Pinocchio? Pinocchio? Oh... Oh, brother, where art thou? That's it. That's really? it. Yeah, you got oh, it. Full see? five points to hell, big. And you know what? You don't even have to see movies to be able to participate in this game. You yep. just have to kind of have enough uh, pop culture references shoved in your face yep. over the last 20 and years. I think it has a lot to do with like the context clues of seeing people be like... Yeah, yeah. It's a Which lot is of, very fun. It's a lot of inaudible noises that help as the hints themselves. So would you like me to pick one for you? Yeah, let's do a... Give me the prompt, and then I'll tell you right away if I already know what it is, because I know a okay. lot of what they are. And a lot of them will be originals. They're not all just reused from the videos, just so you guys are aware of Okay. <clears throat> this street urchin stumbles upon three wishes, but he only has one wish in his heart. To give up his possessions and freeze to death in a van in Alaska. I mean, I know it's okay. Aladdin. Yes. So then the second one probably starts with N. Yeah. Can you give me a hint on the second one, which is on the card? I feel like it's a book every young boy reads when he's like becoming a man and deciding like how he wants to exist in the world. Oh, this explains a lot. Then probably why I don't know. What it is. <laughs> uh, to give up his possessions and freeze to death in a van in Alaska. So like, um, uh, it's three three words. Or do I? No, I give you hints. Okay. Aladdin to the woods. Ooh, so close, so close. Yeah, oh, oh, Aladdin to the wild. Yes. There you go. You did it. See, look, this game is so fun. Hand ups, hand ups, hand ups. Yeah. Um, I have a question from the Instagram. Do you want to hit? Do you want to? Yeah, 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 yeah. In true um, make good content form, our good friend Sarah Whittle, yes. who we will be cleaning up before it comes over to the, this e very evening. Oh, <laughs> that, that means, I mean, there, Sarah's coming over to hang out tonight and the yeah. house is a mess. It's a mess. Grace, like, we got we to gotta clean up. It's like, yeah, for sure, because yeah. we're filthy. Sarah asked on the Instagram, what's something that you guys never agree on? What's something that we never agree on? Hmm. Let's see. Is there something that comes to mind for you immediately? No. Okay. <laughs> no, absolutely not. No, nothing. That we never agree on? Um. Oh, man. I mean, it's... There's uh, some maybe... Sometimes political. I want to watch, like, so much reality TV, like, back to back to back to back, and you need a break. But that's not always disagree on. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of always disagree. Sometimes I want to watch things with plots. Movies. M you could call them movies. Um, some might refer to those as movies or define those as um, f film movies. That's a good question. And I don't know that I even want to know the answer. But I'll definitely be paying attention to it now for yeah. going forward. That we never agree on. I'm trying to think. Well, I think one thing is like you... This is not not... This isn't disagreeing, but you're just um, walking off with things in your pocket or not putting things like keys and stuff back we, we in. We agree the that I do that. <laughs> yeah, we both agree that you constantly, if I can't find something, it's usually in your pocket. Man, I was thinking about that last night, babe. I was doing, I grabbed something out of the, it was the lid. To, okay, this is too much information. It was the lid to the you ice cream. Thank you. An eyelash make a wish. I wish I could have gotten that. I've stopped forgetting oh, things see, in my I, pocket. I did it. I know. And for me, when you pick an eyelash off someone's face, they have to blow it off of your finger to make a wish. I thought you grab it and then whoever's finger it comes off on. This is the answer to your question, Sarah. This is what we've always disagreed on for since we've yeah. known each other. Yeah. We work through it. Every relationship <laughs> has its problems. We'll have to talk offline about this. Um, can you think of anything like as a rule, any area that we don't really... I guess like I feel like we're very good at convincing each other if any the other one has hesitation about <laughs> anything. We're real what they call enablers yeah. <laughs> of each other. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, we're enablers a little bit. Um We're also 
probably too chill about a lot of things. Yeah, I don't have like hard and fast rules that if you don't um, mm-hmm. abide by them, then it's a, it's an issue. Yeah, but me putting stuff down and leaving at places like the ice cream lid and just being like, well, how did it end up over there? I don't yeah. know. There's or no like reason. Ice cream in the <laughs> refrigerator or like milk just kind of wherever. <laughs> I think I put the jelly in the cabinet the other day too. It can Unless go that there. Wasn't, yeah, I think so. There. We'll figure it out. These are the wild <laughs> times that we have here, guys. It's been chaos. Chico51 says, would you take the new vaccine from Pfizer? Go ahead. What, what would you? Yeah. <laughs> you would? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if if people that I respected in positions of authority. Um, like myself. Yeah, uh, thought that it was safe and okay and it had been tested. I know it's what, like 90%. Uh, rate of working. Yeah. Uh, uh, rate a, of working. It's a it's a maybe for I me wish right I now. Had a, if I I think if you yourself don't feel like you have a ninety percent rate of working, then you don't have any room to complain about the I vaccine. Don't, I don't feel like I'm up to ninety percent myself as a human. Mm. So I'll take the vaccine, but I would take I would I don't know I don't really I also don't get have alarmist a, about that stuff. I don't care very much. Right. Well. You're a healthy boy. Healthy boy. Um, yes, I have the honor and the privilege of not having to worry about it. Yeah. I also, I'm such a, a homebody. I'm not going anywhere to see anyone, to mm-hmm. put anyone in danger. So I don't think I'm in a rush to have to get it. Yep. Unless like I got a gig and had to work on set or like, you know, had to go home and see my family or something like that. So. Yeah. Yeah, all of those, all huh. of those factors. Again, guys, wild times, <laughs> wild times, silly, goofy, goofs and spoofs. Because we've been okay, so we've been moving for the past two weeks. We've also been, we're both going to school currently. You've talked about this a little bit, yeah. but we also have a podcast called Pilot On that just sort of stopped uh, because we were <laughs> because doing a bunch of stuff. Everything else in our life started really quickly. Yeah, and so we've been behind the scenes, kind of like uh, two chickens without heads just yeah. flopping around trying to get stuff done very quickly uh we had a very stagnant few months in quarantine which was great made some great life choices i.e going back to school then turns out when you decide to go back to school it starts happening and then it doesn't stop until you're done your master's or phd that you've started to get yes. so that's where we're at uh when we're not Having goofs and spoofs and playing the movie movie game, then we're probably reading or studying or yep. writing assignments for school. Lots of reading. It feels like being like going down a hill of snow mm-hmm. and like a little thing. What do you, you know? Those little discs. A sled. Sled. Yeah. Sure. We'll go with that. <laughs> Fine. We never agree on this. No. Uh, but yeah, it's been very, very fun because we for a while we were like, we have nothing. We we're just to, sticking our thumbs up our do. asses and trying to figure out what to do all day. I don't know. Let's get a. I'll get into knitting for a half a second. You maybe. did get into knitting for. Oh, and I was really looking at. I'm still looking at. I'm still wanting to do the pot. Yes, thing. yes, yes, yes. I'm, that is an actually great activity that I think you should for sure look into. Yeah, but it's been very nice because we've been talking nonstop about stuff that we're learning because there's a lot of overlap in the programs that we're on, which is very cool. And mm-hmm. we're both trying to wrap our heads around similar things. But then when it comes time. To do normal things or talk about normal things or have the energy to disagree or fight. We don't tend to, I don't know that we have the time, we don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah, it's been really good. We've been learning a lot about psychology. And so we've become those people that have deep uh, conversations about. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the brain and the psyche and the all of it and this unconscious and so we're uh, we're an interesting couple to be around <laughs> right now. I don't know if uh, if we're as goofy, spoofy, fun. I think we are. Yeah. I think it's making us more. But we've been very more, busy behind yeah. the scenes, just doing like adult stuff. Um. All right, you ready for a new one? I am ready for a new one. We're gonna do a new one, Grace. Okay. The shitter's full this Christmas, and these two slackers need to save everyone from a zombie horde. This is a really good oh, one. Oh, no. Joe hit this one out of the park. Look, I have no doubt that all of these... Goose <laughs> just dropped her bone yeah. back there. I have no doubt that all of these are impeccably, hilariously written um, which is why I feel like I don't do a good service to presenting how fun this is. Spurt. Okay, so is it Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure? Okay, no. 
<laughs> Wait, it's like two people are set, are have to save something. Mm-hmm. Also, my um, <laughs> listening skills. Uh, you could see why school is a struggle <laughs> for me because my ability to listen uh, and retain and think through what has been told to me in a moment is uh, poor. You have no but, idea how many times over the past month and a half I've seen Grace close a book and go, I didn't get any no of that. I have no idea what I just read. <laughs> uh, can you repeat the question? I absolutely will, Grace. So here's the first part. Uh-huh. The shitter's full this Christmas. The shitter's full this Christmas. What is that about? So Christmas, Christmas movie, famous Christmas movie. And then the second one is, and these two slackers need to save everyone from a zombie horde. So slackers. Now, here's a little hint that I can, is very specific to us. Mm -hmm. These are the second one, two slackers need to save everyone from a zombie horde. That is also the same. Zombieland? So that's also the same at people that are in that Truth Seeker show that we can't decide if we like or don't like. The same people that are in that show are in this movie that you're yeah, talking about? Yeah, those same, those same people. So, so that would be, I'm going to give you that one. Adventureland. Okay. So <laughs> the first flavor of the Cornetto trilogy is what it is. What? Shaun of the Dead. It's like the um, oh, see, I haven't Simon seen Pegg any of and, those. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I've actually ever seen that movie either. But I like. So it. that's the second one. That's the second one. Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead. Okay. Um, uh, so something like Christmas Story. Okay. Uh, You're so close. <laughs> you are so close. Uh, wait, the the shitter is broken uh-huh. on Christmas Day. Full, yeah. Uh, Chevy Chase. Oh, Chevy Chase. Uh, uh, I don't know. One of the Quades. I I can see what those people look like in my Christmas head. Bonus. A Christmas what? Bonus. Bonus. To get a pool or whatever from in the movie, yeah. But a lot of Christmas something lights. vacation. Um, Vegas vacation. So close now. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> what is it? Pull your heck together. I, I haven't seen any of these. Uh. Something, something, vacation. The thing that people talk about all the time. Yep, people it. reference it all the time. Vacation of the dead. <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> what is it? National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation of the Dead. So you have yeah. to say the whole thing now. National Lampoon's Christmas. All right. National Lampoon's Christmas uh-huh. Vacation of the Dead. That's so good, Greg. Wow, wow. See, when you play it on a podcast versus you guys editing it together from movie, movie, game videos, you I know. can see... You know, the struggle that might get edited out of it. (laughs) The shitter's full this Christmas. And these two slackers need to save everyone from a zombie horde. This is a really good one. National Lampoon's Christmas Uh Vacation of the Dead. So good, Greg. Wow! So much struggle gets edited out. Also, like, any other game i might have a chance this is truly the one kind of game that i have no chance alone and if i'm paired with someone i'm only gonna bring them down (laughs) i really haven't seen i'm like unless it's et which we recently watched i probably uh don't have the reference point in my head yeah because they're they're really good at pairing like Movies that movies. people have seen like together. Like one will be one that people have kind of seen and the one's a little bit harder. Okay, this one you might get. And then, but we'll, okay. here we go. We'll That's see. A strong might. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's fighting, excuse me. He's fighting for his dead friend. He's fighting as a metaphorical rep- representation of America during the Cold War. You're not going to get this. Mm-mm. And to lose his delicate flower at the age when one is considered over the hill. What? I didn't even understand that To sentence. lose his delicate flower... At the age when one is considered over the hill. So when is one considered over the oh, hill? Oh, 40-year-old virgin. Mm-hmm. And what was the first part? He's fighting for his dead friend. He's fighting as a metaphorical representation of America during the Cold War. Not not Civil War, which I think is what I said. Cold War. Uh-huh. So something 40-year-old virgin. We'll take it. Uh, one word. One word. Mm-hmm. Partner to Bullwinkle. Oh, Rocky year old virgin. What? Close. Rocky, Rocky forty year old virgin. Yeah, oh, you got it. Okay, okay. 
scenes. Is this like, helping generate excitement? No. Or is- <laughs> That's why you were like, come do this podcast with me. I'm like, I'm only going to show how uh. that this game is harder than it is for everyone else that wants to play. And we'll have a great time playing it. I'm, uh, I'm sucking all the air <laughs> out of the blimp that is this beautiful game. <laughs> you can choose one next if okay. you want. And I'm going to read a couple things from uh, that people have said. Uh, I asked on my Instagram... Um, for people to tell me the most recent stupid thing that they did. The most recent stupid thing I did was I accidentally made one of the, um, I made a Kickstarter live accidentally for a Ooh, movie game for a yeah. second, which is very funny. But, but you learned a valuable lesson that when you make a Kickstarter live, it's difficult to take yep. it back. Yep. <laughs> it's not the prettiest looking thing. And so I had to remake the whole thing and, and it was terrible, but that was pretty dumb. It yeah. taught me also to not talk on the phone at the same time as uh, multitasking, as doing things. Yeah. And yeah. also maybe read buttons before you click on them. That's a big one. Well, weren't you on the phone with Joe going over the Kickstarter? And then he was like, did you just make this live? I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, and then we emailed them and they were like, yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing you can do about it. So that was probably, can you think well, of it? A- yeah, my the stupidest thing I've done recently is kind of right in front of you, these guys. Oh, yeah. Um, We are getting used to being in our new place and where deliveries get made. And I ordered these um, can bug candles because we have a little outdoor space. I wanted to sit outside at nighttime, but there's some bugs. And I didn't know that they got delivered in the driveway and I ran over them in the car. Mm-hmm. And now we can't get either one of them open. <laughs> they're like adult protection locked now. Uh, they're like they're like edibles that you get from Wait. Ease that make it really... There we go. No bugs in here. That'll work, actually. Yeah, see, the candle is just fine. It's just the metal container has been fully Ow. run over by an actual car. Yeah. So that's one of the stupidest things I've done recently. That's not too bad, babe. Truly not too bad. I was, I mean, now that we got one off, at least, that's pretty good. Oh, but I can show them what one kind of dumb thing that you've done recently. Okay. Not dumb. I mean, it works in our favor as a household, but... This is um, for Halloween. Elliot got very excited that we moved into an area that's, you know, potentially under regular circumstances, um, a great neighborhood for trick or treating. Oh. So, would you like to tell them what you did? Well, I went to the store and I don't know what came over me. I truly. I went to Target. They didn't have any candy. And then I went to Rite Aid and they had candy. I don't know why. Elliot bought, like, Probably five actual pounds worth of trick or treat candy. It's got to be more than that. It was <laughs> to so put much. Out on the street in case there was trick or treating. There was no trick or treating. Not one piece of candy <laughs> got taken. Not one piece has got taken. So now we are just slowly chipping away at this insane candy stash that yeah. make us look like tweakers. But I'll take it. It was really like I meant I I got good candy. You like got great a, candy. It wasn't like so the kind. Much great and it was a good mix, I felt like, of like sugar candy and also chocolate, Twix, Snickers, all the heavy hitters. Um, but yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. And then also- no, you had great intentions, but you forgot that there's why? a global pandemic happening and that in Los Angeles, uh, trick-or-treating had been at first like canceled and then they kind of yeah. rolled it back and uh, like highly discouraged it. So of course, no one's <laughs> trick-or-treating in our neighborhood. And it was very sweet and also very sad to watch you walk back up the driveway with a full bucket of candy untouched by a single trick-or-treater. <laughs> and I kept like checking all night to like see. And I, I put know, I kept and also, creeping down like, there. I kept creeping down and be like, maybe somebody. And even when like we got Postmates on Halloween too. And I, as the Postmates guy delivered the food, he like left it. You know, they do the little like leave at your door thing. Yeah. He left it by and I grabbed it and I was like, would you like some candy? He's like, what? And I was like, a candy. There's. If you would like some candy, and he just goes, thank you. And I was like, yeah, have that. He goes, no, thank you. No, and he walked away. And I was like, I can't even give this crap. Think but. about it. If the tables were turned, I would never, in my good conscience, grab a candy from a bucket, no matter how trustworthy or clean or whatever. See, or this is just one of those things we Ill. never agree on. <laughs> yeah. I would absolutely do it. And also, though, you're being very kind about the situation around it, because even if there was not a pandemic happening, it, it, it was st- it's still too much candy. Like it's, it's an insane. So much candy. It was counting. I think you know what I was thinking. I assume some little jackass kid was gonna just dump the whole. Was thing. Was gonna take the whole thing. Yeah. And so I needed a We're bucket a nice of candy for every possible kid. <laughs> yeah. It was very dumb. But now we have a candy. We have so much candy for us. Which for some. Is for us. Lovely. Um. 
Do you mind if I do some ad reads, Grace? I would love you if you... can sit in silence and you can find one while I'll, I... Yeah, I'm just going to educate myself on movies real quick. Great. Well, uh, guys, I'm currently wearing this first sponsor. You know all about them. It's Me Undies, you guys. Okay, so move aside, bears. Okay. This is the human's time to hibernate. Oh. I love what they do with this. Also, so I don't think they realize that you're, I do a lot of laundry for us, and your entire underwear drawer is me undies. I've never Entirely. been. I am loaded with underwear. 100% me undies. And it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> big fan. Um, move aside, bears. <laughs> this is the human's time to hibernate. This holiday season, we actually have an excuse to not go to Aunt Karen's house. Me undies is stoked to say their cozy loungewear and comfy undies will be your holiday hibernation uniform. This is your sign. Stay in, order and cuddle up. Be a bear in lounge pants and hibernate your little butt off. We do this. This is what we do. Yeah. Pretty much, uh, pretty much every night when the sun sets, like little at four fifteen p.m. Four fifteen p.m. <laughs> we get on the couch. And go, okay, uh, we're done. It's um, done for the day. They're they're the best underwear in the world, you guys. They're wonderful. I can't tell the difference truly between the ones that I've had for like a year and a half and the ones that are brand new. So if that tells you anything, gifting me undies um, is uh, this holiday season. We're encouraging you to take it easy, soft. In the stress, literally no more malls and wild holiday shopping. Order me undies online. Psst, they offer free shipping. Gift your family and friends with the coziest clothes and undies for some well-deserved me time. Heck, gift yourself with some of the coziest clothes and undies for some well-deserved me time. This year, we're staying in and we're gonna be darn comfy while we're at it. Me Undies has brand spanking new winter products this year. Get your cozy on with their new PJ sets and holiday themed prints. Keep an eye out for other new additions. Me Undies also has a great membership program on the face, greatest membership program on the face of the earth. It's very true. Get a new pair of undies or socks every month and give your top drawer a complete refresh. Me Undies has a great offer for our listeners of the Valley Cast. For any Woo! first time purchasers, you get 15% off and free shipping. Me Undies also has their problem free philosophy. If you're not satisfied with any product for any reason, they'll refund or exchange at no cash. Caveats, no question. Get your 15% off your first order and free shipping. Go to MeUndies.com slash Valley. That's MeUndies.com slash Valley. MeUndies.com slash Valley. But that's just going on the inside, you guys. What about what goes on the outside? Well, if you're anything like me, online shopping can definitely be daunting. You know, if things... You don't know where things will fit, if returns are going to be difficult, and you don't even know what store to start with. Well, guess what, guys? This season, let Stitch Fix do all the hard work. Joe Ooh. went on a Stitch Fix. Um, I love Stitch Fix. Spree recently, and yeah, he it's wonderful. Does he look classy and sophisticated? He looks so. I was like, you look like he cared. Yeah, he tried. It gives you the, it gives the look off like you really put thought into your clothes, mm -hmm. even though you didn't. It's very good. Because someone else put thought into your clothes. Exactly. As the days get longer and the weather gets colder, it may be time to take a look at your winter wardrobe. And if you want to make a change this season, Stitch Fix can help you choose new pieces you'll love. If your go-to uh, outfit in 2020 has become sweatshirts or yoga pants, okay, now it's getting personal. That's uh, offensive to me, specifically. <laughs> I don't know. We might have to cut this one short. You may be feeling like you're in a style rut. Let Stitch Fix help you feel excited about what you're wearing. Did you just look over your current cold weather wardrobe options and get a chill? It's time to ditch that old sweater and upgrade your jacket. Stitch Fix personal stylist can help you pick new pieces that are timeless. Stitch Fix offers clothing hand-selected by expert stylists for unique size, style, and budget. Every piece is chosen for your fit and for your life, and it's easy solution. And it's an easy solution to finding what makes you look and feel your best. Try on pieces at home before you buy. Uh, keep your favorites and send back the rest. Stitch Fix has free shipping, easy returns and exchanges, and a prepaid return envelope is included. That means you can just stuff it in, use a little sticker, throw it in the thing, and you're good to go. It's actually really easy to use. I've done that before, and they'll send you something that either fits or they'll give you credit for the next purchase which is really great try on pieces at home i already read that there's no subscription required try stitch fix once or set up automatic deliveries you'll pay just a 20 dollars styling fee for each box which gets credited toward pieces you keep and there are no hidden fees ever stitch fix has styles and clothing to fit any occasion for women and men and kids and they ship all over the u.s and they're available in the uk as well so to get started today at stitchfix.com slash valley and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. And you'll want it. That's stitchfix.com slash valley for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. Stitchfix.com slash valley. Grace, you Ooh. have done such a great job of shuffling these these things here. I've touched the cards with my fingers. <laughs> I've touched many of these cards with my fingers. And I've looked at them and, I'll, and thought, wow, these are great. People that... <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. These are great. These are very funny. And also for people that know these movies, these are just so fun for them. Mm-hmm. I can understand how people that understand this would have a great time playing this. I love that, babe. Yeah. It's a truly different language than I speak, but I'm like, oh, this must be so fun for the people that know all of this stuff. It's like how it's like I when, feel about anime. Right. Or like uh, when you watch someone solve a Rubik's Cube. You're like, that must be so cool. That must feel so cool to do, to know the algorithms and how to do it. Same with this, to know the movies Mm -hmm. that they're talking about. (laughs) To to just be privy to this world of movies that just... No, this game just really makes me feel insecure. (laughs) Yeah. So it does make me feel like the competitive side of me is like, oh, shit, I got to watch movies just so I can be okay at this game. We had, yeah, we had a, a meeting where me, Joe, and Steve really racked our brains for the best, like... So, you know celebrity mascots for the game and we were like who can we get that gets stressed when they play hasn't seen movies doesn't really know what's going on and 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 uh and we landed on you yeah someone that just really won't show the product well yeah yeah thank you absolutely thank i you. appreciate it I've kickstarter.com been, <laughs> i've been looking for a brand deal for a while mm-hmm. thank you guys finally for believing <laughs> yeah. in me uh. checks in the, in the in the mail okay um, would you like to try one of these yeah hit me Okay, let's see. I'm going to try and get one that I, I think... Okay. <clears throat> a student wants to stand out above the crowd and impress his crush. Too bad they don't see eye to eye as she's too busy. Utilizing terrorist vigilante tactics to topple the fascist government that has taken over England and turned it into a police state. So the first one I think you'll really get because it does mm. have a close relation, personal relationship to you and I think is probably one of your favorite movies. That's an element of this game we haven't really talked about is when people say things like, you're definitely going to get this Yeah, one. that's, that's the other added back. added pressure. Like when you're trying to pick ones that you think are easy softballs uh-huh. for me, I'm like... Pah. You, they just you really dig in my hole deeper for me. Thank you. Never underestimate how little I know. Okay. A student wants to stand out above the crowd and impress his crush. Too bad they don't see I to I as she's too busy. So hint one. The movie's namesake kicks it with a duck and mouse on the regular. Think about your history. A goofy movie. Uh-huh. And then... She's too busy utilizing... A goofy movie V for Vendetta. Yeah! You know, I did see V for Vendetta. I would have no idea that that was what that movie was about. Uh, it took me a while, and I'm pretty sure it's just a result of me having heard that one before. Probably. And even then, I was like, I don't know. Do you, have you seen Goofy movie? No. We got to watch that yeah. like really soon. See, That's this a is solid a, movie. This is a great byproduct of this game is that you remember movies that you haven't seen or haven't seen in a long time or that you want to show someone else. And it, it causes um, uh, fun after you're done playing. See, look, I'm just I'm trying to earn my ability to promote this game. Guys, this is fun and you will have a great so time. Sweet. So sweet. Do you have another prompt over there? Uh, Susie says... Quarantine guilty pleasure. I think quarantine is maybe my guilty pleasure. Yeah, we've really, really dug our heels into um, being at home watching TV yeah. every night. Which is, I mean, like, I don't have a need to go out to a, a bar or restaurant or any of those places, even if they are open and safe. Uh, I, we also have just been so busy that it's like feels shoehorning it in to try mm-hmm. and like go do stuff. Um, I don't know the point anymore. I don't remember it. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember going I've, out. I've conditioned myself to be on the couch in the comfy corner of the couch at a certain time of day, and I let the TV babysit me for the rest <laughs> of the night. <laughs> What's like? Because I'll talk to my family in Florida, and everything's very open there, and they have, and they'll be right. Like, they're out living loud and proud. Yeah, but I'm like, what isn't open? I don't even know what's open and what's not open. It just sort of got. It's something like we bred out of our existences we just sort of yeah. don't have it anymore we don't, i don't know what the i think at one point we'll end up compensating and, and having like a fun time doing something well also right now like not to be real real but like uh cases are skyrocketing you know post-election celebrations and all of that that it's like 
I'm pretty good hunkering down still. I, I've, in fact, it's like my special skill. It's like uh, you're my, really good at it. I'm very, very good. Not good at watching movies, even though you would think the environment in which I've created for myself and, would be perfect for that. <laughs> we, we we saw this TikTok that was like. That girl, or maybe it wasn't a TikTok. It was some Twitter oh, video. Oh yeah, yeah. That's like when you watched reality TV for like hours and hours, and a friend suggests that you watch a movie for the first time. Yeah, and this girl in the Twitter. I wish I knew her name, but she's like, so, "Movie? You want to watch a movie? I can do it. That's over thirty minutes. Okay. That's one of the long ones. <laughs> That's one of the long ones. I can do it. Oh, it's so good. I love it. So I feel every time I even suggest a movie because I also I have compensate for Grace not liking movies by being like. Let's try something different and crazy, like a movie. But even a part of me is still going, oh, it's so long. <laughs> I know. But long. we'll find a reality show that we love and we'll watch it for five hours oh, straight. Y'all, we watched the Alone on the History Channel, mm-hmm. which, you know, uh, I take TV recommendations with a grain of salt. Yeah. And we tried Alone because we're big Survivor fans. And holy moly, we blew through two seasons in like three days. <laughs> yeah, which is... You would think that we say we have so much going on that you're like, how is that possible that you can watch nine hours of a program yeah. while you have, quote, so much going on? You know, it's really about balancing your time. You make the time for the things that you really want. Exactly. Um, Hit me with another one while I look at one of these things. Okay. <clears throat> oh, hold on. Go ahead. Somebody said, I won't name the name, but they said, I said, what's the stupidest thing you've done recently? And they said, well, I dated a juggalo for a few months, so I went for most stupid. Okay. I got nothing against juggalos. Family. But. Family. Family. That's what they chant. Is that what they're family, yeah. I mean, that's That's as much as I know about them and that Mamrie and Tyler are obsessed with them. Um, Because he's from Michigan. Juggalos are, I guess, a Michigan staple. I don't know. I really don't know. Really? No, yeah. I got no no (laughs) problem. I think any, any fandom is... <clears throat> Go on. <laughs> Any fandom is great. Yes. Um, <laughs> would you like to try one of these? Uh, yeah, I do. Hit me with a baby. Okay. Hit me. Tired of his own holiday, the Pumpkin King decides to practice medicine during the Korean War. Nightmare Before Chris Master and Commander. Mm, you got the first one. Oh, Nightmare Before Chris... So the second one, I don't know if you're going to get, but I, okay, the hint is, this hint won't help you. No, wait, say the, pl- say the, the. Decides to, pra- uh, tired of his own holiday, the Pumpkin King, decides to practice medicine during the Korean War. And if you like Alan Alda, you'll love the television show by the same name. Yeah, uh, Nightmare Before Chris Mash. There you go. That's See? a very good one. Look how fun this game is. You can give hints and then someone gets closer to the answer till they finally get it. And then you guys can celebrate together as an earned collective victory. An earned collective victory. Ugh. It's just fun conversation starters, really. Oh, uh, the stupidest thing someone did recently was continuing to attend grad school during a pandemic. Ooh. Well, that, we should have read that. We should ask this person oh, before this we is, made some big life decisions. That's you, what somebody said. Yeah, you asked everyone what they what's the stupidest thing they've done recently. Yeah. <laughs> There's some f- very fun answers in here. A lot of just personal injuries. Yeah, um, yeah. I feel like um, left my is, phone in the fridge is a really good one. Ooh, okay. Yeah, How did yeah. it get there? Why? Why'd you put it there? Don't. I'm not one to judge. I know. I was gonna say you will eventually do that if you haven't already. <laughs> that I don't know about. <laughs> this one says. Uh oh. This one just says. Lost my snake. <laughs> that is, um, that's a national threat. Like that, uh, I don't like that at all. And I don't know if that's a euphemism. <laughs> I don't know if that's literal. Uh, but you gotta find that snake, find whatever that snake. it is. That's an episode of Peep Show that y'all should check out, where they, lo- they lose a snake in like a discovery zone, like uh, Chuck E. Cheese uh, type of deal with babies and kids rolling around. No, thank um, you. Here's another one. Mm-hmm. Told the drive-through worker, "I love you" instead of "thank you." Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a, those are tough ones when you mix up saying "I love you" to someone that's like a professional. Yeah. Or if you call someone mom or dad. Those kind of things. Yeah, if you talk, call the teacher mom, that's always a fun one. Yeah. Or dad. It happens. It happens. And I'm sure those people, like the drive-through deliver uh, person, 
has heard the craziest shit. Yeah, and they're probably just happy people are nice at all. Yeah, and it makes their day fun. They have a story to tell someone. Who doesn't like hearing I love you? True. In these times, it is a precious thing to say. One time I got McDonald's and I was on the road eating, and I was probably like 16 at the time, and I had the double cheeseburger and french fries. Uh, No, I didn't have french fries. I just had a double cheeseburger, and I was so hungry, and I was enjoying it so much, and Mm -hmm. apparently I was very demonstrative about it, and I looked over, and there were these dudes, these big, burly dudes in like a big pickup truck looking at me and they were just cracking up because they were seeing me like really enjoying this this double cheeseburger and I was kind of embarrassed but I was also like I'm really enjoying it and so I took it and kind of cheers them through uh-huh. the window with it as a little 16 year old kid and then one of them went you have fries you have fries you have fries I was like no fries just burger <laughs> and then they're like all right and then they zoomed away <laughs> I was wondering the whole time why you made such a specific point in the beginning to tell us that you didn't have it came french around fries. in the end okay there it is <clears throat> what do you got What do you got? Okay. A young boy damn near shoots his eye out after integrating an all-black school with an all-white school, but hot damn, what a football team. This might be my favorite one. It is a Christmas store, Remember the Titans. Yeah! Wow! When you've seen both movies, ooh, there's a good, it's a good feeling. Yeah, I haven't seen Remember the Titans in so long. Um... Catherine says she learned there's a second bathroom in her house that she didn't know about. (laughs) Is that a dream? (laughs) What? Is it your house? Is it a bucket? Did you find a bucket? Did you find a bucket? Did you find a bucket in the closet? (laughs) Because I've been there in the darkness of Mm. the night and going, oh, second bathroom. (laughs) Um, Wow. I didn't even know I had this entire second bathroom. Oh, man. Now I can list this house for way more than I once thought I could. That's incredible. Um, And also very haunting. Something's very haunting about a mysterious bathroom that shows up that you didn't know was there. Mm Mm-hmm. Wow. I I have so many more questions about this whole mysterious uh, hidden bathroom. What a tease. If you could have a farm full of dogs, what three breeds would you choose, Grace? I love this question. Ooh, okay. A farm full of dogs, three breeds. Wow. Okay. Well, I think I'd want them to all be a little different. Um, so let's see. Do you, do you have three that come to mind right away? Yeah. Okay. What Golden Retriever, mm. Corgi, mm. English Bulldog. Golden Retriever, Corgi, English Bulldog. Oh yeah. Cause Corgis are like herding dogs. Yeah. English Bulldogs won't go anywhere. I think you and need. And Golden Retriever would just be out there all day. Right. I think you need certain dogs fulfill certain things better mm-hmm. there's companionship and loyalty but there's also humor yes i know that's what I, bulldogs are i'm trying to think hilarious like, <laughs> i know they are great but on a farm i feel like they wouldn't be able to get the full farm experience as much but you know you got to keep some close to home well see the other thing too is i want the the bulldog to be taken care of and guided and shepherded mm. by the herding corgi yes okay as well as the wise old i'm just basically doing homeward bound i'm right i'm making home yeah bound. yeah you are a bit Let's see. What would I want? I think... You love your smash faces. I love like French bulldogs very much, and I love bulldogs. Maybe a French bulldog would be one of them, just mm-hmm. because they're a little bit more active. I keep thinking of dachshunds, because just dachshunds on a farm is very funny looking yeah. to me. <laughs> too big uh, a space, too small thing. Right. And then what are, the, what are the dogs that have the barrels under their chin that go and rescue people in the snow? You, barrels under the chin? What yeah, the, in the cartoons, they have the barrels under the chin and they go rescue someone that's like fallen on the ski lift and they give them like medicine. L- like a husky? No, no, they're like a uh, Beethoven Barrel? looking dogs. Oh, 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 um, not German Shepherd. It's a. Uh, what is that? No, I'm blanking on it. Yeah, see, this is uh, this is an impossible. St. Bernard's. St. Bernard's. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah I think those are those, amazing. I think those. I don't. I, Samoyed. I, I like Samoyeds. Yeah. See, I love French Bulldogs, but maybe I would just want one that wouldn't be one of the breeds, the three breeds. I love Dachshunds, St. Bernards, and then maybe like... Dachshunds and St. Bernards bonding would be wonderful. So great. So great. But what's the third? The third, maybe it's like, um, gosh, I'm trying to think of breeds of dog now uh, that are like chill and cool. But also like easy to deal with. 
Um, hmm, <laughs> I have so many options running through my head. I mean, I, Dalmatians are too aggressive, I think, for that situation. Uh, what are the dogs? Oh, Sheba in use. She being used, yeah. But they're very chill. So they're maybe very chill. chow chows. Those are great dogs. Those are not chill. Those are wild. But on a farm <laughs> with dachshunds and St. Bernard's, it'd be like they'd look like sheep from a distance. I mean, I have corgis <laughs> in my list, so I can't yeah. I can't discount dogs that easily turn into But assholes. That's a great question to think about. Now I mean I'm like taking this more seriously than any of these movie movie game questions. Like, ooh, something we can really sink our teeth into. Yeah, I've heard of dog breeds before. <laughs> <laughs> oh man any other questions in there brian says how does it feel living with a blonde bombshell wow really good yeah he's looking at himself in the uh, no i looked right, right at now. the green light i've been trying to not <laughs> don't y'all hate that we no i know look you know we're a house of blondes now so now our our it's stupidity is warranted mm -hmm. it's founded in science now house of blondes you can't expect much from us <laughs> hit me with a prompt baby okay or do you want one a move no i would love to this is where i shine is giving these prompts reading okay here we go <clears throat> nobody puts baby in the corner except for gene kelly after belting one out in a deluge nobody puts baby in the corner mm-hmm uh, I don't want to do this one. Okay, we'll pass. Here we go. See, that would that would make me lose five points. We'd go to the next person in the actual game. Ah, I see. Okay. If we played it that way. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Arnold and Sinbad fight tooth and nail for the hottest toy of the season. Baberham Lincoln. Arnold and Sinbad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... um. Yeah, Arnold and Sinbad is the, one of the classic films. One of the first movies I ever realized that I didn't like. Okay. Uh, but I still wanted the toy, and it's Jingle All the Way. Uh -huh. So I'm going to assume it's Jingle All the Wayne's World. Yeah! Is it Wayne's, just Wayne's World? Or Wayne's? Yeah. Okay, great. Just Wayne's World. Jingle All the Wayne's World. Yeah. That's a fun one. <laughs> um, let's see. Stupid thing that somebody did. Either messaging my ex or eating that Subway sandwich from two days ago. One can lead to the other, I found. And both of them will upset your stomach you will do that i went we, we ordered taco bell a couple nights ago and i came out the next morning and you put a lot of it in the fridge and, and you were like i'm i'm just i'm trying to throw it in the bus or i'm just saying i'm very proud of you and i think you're really cool oh what's the what's the situation what are you squawking about leftover taco bell oh yeah leftover taco bell i mean i think that uh taco bell in and of itself is just food that's meant to survive the apocalypse right yeah that's my assumption I haven't done any Googling to prove otherwise, so I'll live in my blissful ignorance about it. I like that, Grace. Thank you. Sam says he left his car unlocked and someone took my jumper cables. <gasps> took their jumper cables? What a curious thing to take from a car. Stealing things is very fascinating to me. It's very curious, It's all, but also to steal someone's jumper cables, like you needed them to get your car started, yeah. but you couldn't just like ask if you could that you saw some jumper cables and hey may i borrow them yeah <laughs> that's or they maybe thought that they were something else i don't know jumper cables seems very specific hard to miss hard to miss with that is well grace how you feeling you feel good i feel great i feel a little um in a, the best way possible knocked down a peg by the movie movie game but good. it only encourages you needed me. that i do i did <laughs> i needed my ego checked for the day and it only encourages me to want to watch more movies to actually be able to participate in this game and not like I'm the handicap of a team that's competing You're in not this game. A, handicap. <laughs> a ragtag group of seemingly discarded appliances are on an adventure to find their master whilst outrunning the T1000. Brave little toaster? Outrunning the T1000? Mm -hmm. Brave little toasterminator? Two? Revenge of the, the Terminators. Day, Revenge of the Terminators. That's it. <laughs> Good yes, job, Gracie. Thank you. Anyone can play. Uh, guys, thank you so much for listening to this very and watching this very special episode of the Valley Cast. Grace, thank you for doing this. I know it was early and you have we have busy days. And you know what? You. You're doing it in our house, so it's yeah. easy to participate. Yeah, and we're getting we're nesting and it's very cozy and nice. And so yes. thank you all. Thank you for the prompts and everything. If you would like to see more of these podcasts, you can always subscribe on iTunes or Spotify. You can leave us a review on iTunes, which is very helpful. We will be doing the pilot on podcast again. 
again. Don't worry. Yes. We're coming back. We just, we just want to do it at a point where we can do it consistently. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Once we start, we're going to, you're going to keep going. Yeah. Um, you can also check out the fundamentalists weekly that I do with Peter Rollins, which is very fun. And uh, if get you get ready like, for the movie, movie, game. get ready for the movie, movie game. If you like more fun bonus content as well, you can go to patreon.com slash the Valley folk. Click that link in the description to go either the Patreon or also the Kickstarter pre-launch page. So you can get notified when we go live on Friday for our very fun live stream extravaganza. That's just going to go for hours and hours and hours. And we're going to see what happens. And it's going to be very enjoyable. You guys are going to see each other in person. Yeah. Um, thank you guys very much. Grace, you're thank adorable. You. Bye. Bye. I'm